Ja. Jackson Dodd from the 4th and Elm Church of Christ. Promises are a tricky thing. There are so many ways to define promises. Contracts are written agreements or promises, and vows are spoken statements between two lovers that promise to take care of each other. And my favorite, of course, is the pinky promise, <laughs> all of which can produce results or be broken. With, what, with promises from this world, there will always be a risk of us not getting what we want from it because this world is broken, and whatever comes of this earth will produce an earthly gain. Genesis 6, the sixth chapter of the entire Bible, and God is already frustrated with how his people have led astray from him, saying, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. Even though there is evil being done well before this, all the way into the, first, or the second chapter, this is an important moment in the Bible, as God has now seen only one man out of his entire creation worth saving on this earth. He had declared the earth evil and broken, and was ready to start over. Noah makes his ark, and the earth floods. Afterwards, God makes his promise to never destroy the earth again, and gives Noah the rainbow. You know, the story we've all grown up with. This story is very important to us Christians, because it shows, first, the power of God, and how he has the ability to wipe us out at any moment but then also the graciousness of God and the promises that he's been able to keep with us, just like he kept Noah, to not destroy the earth again. One of my favorite examples of the promise I've been given was with my mom. I was like four or five at the time, and I loved grapes. I've been given, oh, so there I was eating my grapes, and then I ran out of grapes. Tragedy, I know. Anyways, I asked my mom for more grapes, and she told me I could have some of hers. But when I looked at them, they were, I bet they were the same size as a grape, but they were red. And I'm not a professional in grapes, but I don't think they're red. <laughs> so I'm not calling my mom evil for what she did, but <laughs> there's a very silly example of something similar that can help, that has helped me in the past and I could enjoy. But just like my interest into red, red cherry tomatoes, promises from God can be broken. The reason human promises can always be fulfilled is because we can get caught up in our own affairs and problems that we try to help others rather than assess our own problems and reflect. Matthew 7, verse 3 and 5 say, Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and you'll see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. As a society, we've moved on to instead of fixing ourselves to fix problems of others and our friends because we don't want to look in the mirror and see what we've become. We are all hypocrites promising to fix others before we are fix ourselves. Broken is the only way to describe this world. But there is a promise for us to be somewhere else, somewhere higher where promises won't be broken than can be kept. This promise is made by our God, the keeper of the promise to Noah and many before and many after him. God knows every promise he makes, and he makes them with the purpose because he knows our future and he knows what's in store for us. And the reason we cannot keep our promises are because we only see the present. We see the now and what we have to gain from this earth. And God has that pl the plan that is bigger than all of us. And it's difficult to see in full effect when we have a plank in our own eye. God is perfect. He has no planks or specks. The only time death even thought about a win was when God sent himself, sent his son down to the earth to fulfill a promise and save us all. And us, as the hypocrites we are, we murdered him and hung him to a cross. We sin, we lie, we cheat, we steal, and we make promises we cannot keep, for we do not know the future of what we're making. We cannot take any of this thing, anything of this world uh, up to heaven with us. But it does not matter. What God has promised us is way more powerful than anything we can find down here. Ecclesiastes 5.5 5. It is better to not vow than to vow and not pay. Thank you.